So I've got this Dell M4700 um, that is a very good laptop. Um, it just happens to run a little bit hot. Uh, the machine's about three, four years old now. Um, and I have a feeling that the problem that we have here, I mean, you can see ambient or idle temperature is about 51 degrees Celsius, which is pretty high. Um, most laptops will run um, considerably uh, cooler than that. In fact, I can really quick start at Prime 95 and show you what it does under load. If I can remember exactly how to do this. What is it? It is test. How's it going? Ah, it's going. All right, so you can see already we've jumped up to 80 degrees. If this would focus, there you go, 82 degrees. And it seems to, at about 100% load, it'll run at about 82 to 83 to 84 degrees. So you can see 100% load on the CPU. Oh, I forgot how to do this. Stop! There we go. So anyway, um, it runs hot, the fans uh, kick on a lot, um, and I think that it's very likely that my uh, thermal pads that they use on the, on the coolers on this guy are starting to get a little crusty over time. Um, Gosh, the focus, come on. So, um, you can see, I've got the, if you look up, you know, your laptop model, if it's a professional Dell machine, you can say, I want the Dell Precision M4700, um, <clears throat> owner's manual, a service manual, and you can just download them or view them uh, online. Very good uh, tool. Most Lenovo's that I've seen have that as well, I think, pads. Um, I've torn this one apart. I've torn, torn my uh, X61S apart with the uh, with the info you can find online. Um, really good documentation of that kind of stuff. Uh, it is also 1240. Come on, focus. 1240. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and start tearing this guy apart, and then I want to use this. This is called K5 Pro. It's thermal compound, but it's um, much more viscous than. Uh, most thermal compounds or uh, thermal greases out there. Um, this one's made by Cons Computer Systems, which is a Greek company. Of, uh, at least the, <coughs> the info they have on the little, on the little Amazon uh, thing is. In fact, hold on. I've got it here. Yeah. K5 Pro Thermal Paste. Uh, it's a viscous thermal paste is developed and produced by Computer Systems Laboratories Research and Development. This product was developed as part of CS Labs BGA Re rework research project with support of Greece and Euro European Union. Uh, so anyway, I've, I've seen a, a people, a few people reference this stuff. So um, if you take a look inside, it looks kind of like silly putty, but should have pretty good thermal compound, uh, thermal properties. So we should be able to use this and the strange purple splinter stick that they gave uh, with it. Focus, damn you. A little purple stick. It's hard to tell because the light is kind of funky in here. But um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and um, take this guy apart down to the CPU and GPU and remove the heat sinks and uh, sort of document that process. Okay, well, <clears throat> uh, the easy part is taking out the, well, I wouldn't say easy. It's a bit of a mess, but it's not too hard, if, especially if you're looking at instructions. Um, to remove the CPU heatsink, and um, yeah, it comes off in a single piece. The GPU looks like it's going to be a little bit tougher. There's a few captive screws on the back, it looks to be. Um, it's all documented in the manual, obviously. It's all there. Um, you just need to uh, find that document. And it uh, looks like, so we've got the main uh, heat transfer location, let's just say that. And then we've got a few more along here that look like they're for some of these, like, uh, these other smaller components. Now, um, it's obviously important that we hit those as well with the um, thermal compound, but it looks like they didn't actually use thermal pads for that. It looks a lot more like a regular old paste, which is a little bit concerning. And I know that I've got some thermal compound here. Well, actually, hold on. So, get under some light. And it looks like it was applied in some sort of, uh, like a, a strip or something like that. Like some sort of very obviously like pre-applied sort of thing. Sort of like the uh, stuff that you get with uh, Intel stock coolers. Uh, that stuff that's on there. But it does look more like paste to me. Like if I... Well, it's definitely hard. I mean, 
it shouldn't be that hard. So it's a good that we're pulling it off to clean it. But I wonder if just regular old Arctic silver, or I guess I don't have Arctic silver, whatever I have might actually be better. Because this is a heat pad, as I know it. This guy right here. These things. Those are going to be important to hit with the, the K5 Pro. But I'm wondering if maybe just Arctic silver would be better on there or whatever. Whatever thermal comp that I have. I'm going to look around and see. Because it, it says, um, the service manual assumes that you're just going to get a, um, what do they call it, an FRU, or a field replacement unit, that's what Lenovo calls them, um, of this part, which would become pre-applied with this thermal compound that the tech would just slap in there and call it good after cleaning that surface on the, on the chip. Um, so that's going to be a bit of a judgment call on my part. It does look... You know what, I wonder if this has actually been removed in the past before. I, I didn't think that this machine had been opened, but... Um, See that little, like, the silver spot in the middle? Yeah, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to finish cleaning this guy off, all the, all the old material on there. And I'm going to try to determine whether I think that a regular conventional thermal compound would be better on there than this stuff. Okay, so I've got the CPU fan uh, cleaned up for the most part. A little bit streaky, but it um, should be fine. So this is kind of interesting. See that little spot there in the middle, uh, right? Yeah, it's just right about in the middle, maybe to the left. Not the streak that's going across to the left. The the uh, little silver spot. There's another matching spot right there on the CPU, and I've, I've never seen that, personally, uh, working on computers. I wonder if it got hot enough for something to actually... Yeah, I can't even think of what that might be, but... That's pretty strange. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, uh... Gotta finish cleaning off the stuff on the board. I didn't even notice... Gosh, some of this stuff looks like it's getting really hot. Look at that one, it's completely discolored. Those I imagine should be all identical. Fuck, I'm not I'm not competent in doing surface mount repair. Eh, it's not good. Um or BGA rework for that matter. Uh the chipset obviously needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but um shouldn't be too big of a deal. It's just a little spot right there where it shares cooling with the CPU. That is a little concerning though, that component, whatever the heck that guy is. That's sort of shiny like that, but anyway. It still works, so I'm not going to get worked up over it. Okay, so if this stupid thing would focus, just for the sake of comparison, that's the uh, heat pad that was used on the chipset, and this is the amount of thermal compound I'm considering putting there. The, the concern that I have is that I really don't know the clearances for these things. I don't know how, how tightly pressed down that pad was. Some of them, like this one, had pretty solid imprints. Um, like you can still see the square of where the chip was actually seated on there. Some of them barely have imprints at all, like on this one on the right here. Um, focus, damn you. Um, there, There's barely any patterns there. So I really, this is a completely different animal than, um, than doing this on a uh, desktop PC. So I'm wondering if the good if a good tactic here is to just glom on a lot more than you might do on a desktop since you're not just Desktop CPU you really just sort of crunch it down on there with this. I don't know the tolerances. I feel like the CPU is going to be pretty dang close Yeah, this is a bit uh, this is different So after a little bit more searching around um, I have discovered that um, the the K5 Pro, the computer systems guys, I guess that's what they call themselves. These guys recommend that you use the K5 Pro in conjunction with standard, uh, standard thermal compound that you'd use on any old CPU install. So on this guy, use, use this stuff, or use their version, which is the K4 Pro. And then on the, on the uh, BGA devices like the chipset and then these surface mounted devices, uh, go ahead and use this stuff. So anything that used thermal pads, this is what this is for. Since this, since the CPU originally used this stuff, or you know, the, the factory equivalent of this, which is the pre-applied stuff, just use this. Um, or just use something like this, or get the K4 Pro, or use, what am I using here? I'm using Arctic, Arctic Silver, Arctic Alumina, or excuse me, Arctic Alumina, not Arctic Silver. And that's just whatever, standard old ceramic thermal compound. So, I'm going to go ahead and apply a small bead of that to this, to the CPU. And then I'm going to do the same. Uh, they really show, uh, what I saw was people really glomming on this stuff. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll really apply a lot of this. It's not collect to conduct electricity. Um, so, you don't really need to worry about that. But, again, the more, is the, more is merrier with this stuff. I don't know. 
Okay, so I've cleaned this guy off completely as you've seen already. And what I've done is I've just sort of, um, I've done a, a pretty big, actually, bead of the, uh, the Arctic, Arctic Alubita. And uh, that's actually a way more than I'd use generally. I just want to, I guess, make sure it's there. I guess in this case, this isn't, this probably isn't too much, technically, but it's, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, and I've sort of globbed a little bit on each, each important piece that this guy touches. Um, you can sort of see where it makes contact there on the chip set. Uh, these guys here, there's a little spot there for those two right there. There's one right there and, and so on. So, yeah, this should be just about ready to go ahead and get reseated. Um, this is really just a sort of rotate it in and then let it fall down and line up with this peg here. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and it should, should be good to go. So I went ahead and rotated it back down, and I definitely used more than necessary. You can sort of see it sticking out of the side there, and along here, that was definitely too much, but whatever. All right, so there's the video card off. Looks like they use those heat pads, um, as we saw with the CPU and the, the modules around there. Um, they use heat pads for that here as well, for the memory modules for the GPU, and, oops, sorry, I'm, very, I'm really tired. Jesus, 236, okay. Um, and for the other little components around there, so on the video card and the little MXM video card. So, um, we just need to clean this off, take off those things, and then reapply the thermal paste and then the K5 onto these guys, or I guess onto these guys, and then I can go to sleep. Just cleaning off the GPU, and I noticed here, right in the center, focus, damn you, look, you got a bit of the NVIDIA logo on the, on the back of the, um, or on the contact there. Look at this. Like, it just transferred right over. I'm wondering if that's, you know, some of the, the compound that's just really on there because of the etching on there. That's really cool. I've never seen that before. Get a better view. Okay, so I've reapplied all the thermal compound, the K5 stuff, onto the GPU. And it's now 3.15 because I'm watching Happy Valley. And... I'm not really getting much of this work done. So, uh, I'll go ahead and reattach everything and you get it to the basic setup where I can just, you know, have everything plugged in and then turn it on, check the temps, and then make sure everything's good, then finish closing it all up. And I will try to film as much of that as possible. I'm really taking my time with this thing. So, I've put everything back together with, you know, just the in case anything went wrong, I didn't put everything absolutely back together. I probably could have done without these screws, but whatever. Let's see if it just immediately hits T-junction. So there's the drive checking itself, the disk drive, and we get the BIOS logo. So that's good. Hopefully we'll get to Windows we can check the temps. And I uh, don't remember what I was seeing for GPU, but uh, looks like I've put in the keyboard correctly, which is always a relief with those, with those snap, uh, one of those flat flex cables that can strip if you pull them out wrong. Give me a sec. Okay, so let's get specky. Whoops, I am stupid. Where the fuck is my copy of specky? There we go. Alright, temps. CPU 63. Hmm. It's probably under mild load right now. 35%. Let us let it idle for a little bit and see what it settles down to. I wonder if it's just normal for this machine to run hot. Uh, so, yeah. I think we are beginning to see, at 3.50 in the morning, uh, the results of a success. So, it seems to be about 7 degrees cooler running at um, absolute maximum. Um, at least immediately. Um, in the past, this machine usually... Uh, when running at you know full CPU, it'll idle at about 30 or er, excuse me 83 to 85 degrees Celsius. Now it seems to be, and I didn't mean the idling. God, I'm really tired. Um, seem to be uh, temps around 83 to 85. Now it's actually about 73. So that's 10 degrees cooling on a high end or uh, cooler on the high end. That's not too bad. Full utilization, full speed. I think that's the full turbo. Or something like that. It doesn't seem to be throttling at all. 
But hey, that's a lot better. And I don't think we get any specs on the graphics as far as temperatures. I'm sure it's good. You know, I probably should grab some performance benchmarking software really quick and just see what kind of deets we can get out of this guy. 73, that's an improvement though. So let me, let me stop this really quick. Test, stop. 67, 66, 68. It seems to be very, like, okay, idling pretty hot. Oh, I meant to do summary, not just CPU. Pardon the shaky cam as usual. So 55, so I guess it is a little bit cooler. It idle around. Pretty average just doing things in the background. Uh... I'd say that's an improvement. Okay, so I've got a combustor running here, MSI's combustor, uh, just a GPU stress tester running in the 720p window, and uh, CPU t uh, usage is about 98% and temperature is about 57 degrees, so uh, the, uh, the system is practically idling as CPU as far as, as, far as f f excuse me, as far as the CPU is concerned, is practically idling. It's about 10% usage on there, but the GPU is going crazy, so. It's interesting, I can barely hear anything out of that GPU uh, fan. Uh, let me go ahead and actually run this in, not full screen, but, <gasps> oh my god, in 1920 by 1080, just because I'm curious. And... It's only 45 frames per second. But yeah, so there you go. Um, that's how you, you know, that's that's my install of K5 Pro. I'm sorry I was sort of uh, tired and sleepy, but uh, I need to go to bed now. Um, yeah, K5 Pro seems to be pretty good for uh, stuff like memory and uh, uh, components that need to be cooled but are not uh, quite with the tolerances of uh, a CPU or GPU. For that, use something a little more traditional like Arctic Silver or or whatever you got. So yeah, thanks for watching.